Welcome back everybody to my 47th update video. Now in this video I take a look back at 10 past product reviews in order and let you know how those products fared at the time and if they ended up in my boneyard or if I continue to keep using them. The products covered in this video are number 461 through 470 which is January through February of 2023. So without further delay let's get right to update number 47. Number 461 was a comparison of two inkless pens. One was $6, one was $200. And the results of this test were pretty surprising. Check it out. This is supposedly an inkless pen that uses no lead, no ink. It has an alloy tip that basically will last forever. 200 bucks, $5.50. Both of these are supposedly inkless pens. We shall see. Let's try the cheap model now and see how that does. Now this has a much finer tip, you can tell. Oh, this feels much more like a, like a mechanical pencil. You so I can go from light to dark. I can, I can do that too. But I have more of a range. I can go from lighter to darker than I could with the expensive pen. Here we go. I'm just going to say, I'm going to write some words here. All right, let's try the cheap pen now. See how that does. Same words. Expensive pen right here. From light to dark. Now the, uh, the cheaper one. Light the dark over the top over the top that's a big that's a jay leno chin right there i mean for for doing some sketching it doesn't seem too bad it really isn't isn't awful i'll probably keep using them although i'll use this one more than this one this is probably okay for light lines for sketching but the six dollar model feels like i can use it actually for writing and more everyday use now, as soon as that video was done, the $200 model ended up in my boneyard alongside the other products I don't use. But I kept the $6 model out and I still use it almost on a daily basis. It's obviously more like a mechanical pencil than a pen, but I like it and recommend it all the time. Number 462 was an indoor fire pit that runs on rubbing alcohol. I wasn't sure if that was a good idea or not, so I tried it out and here's how that went. It's a portable tabletop fireplace that's odorless and smokeless fueled by standard rubbing alcohol. So here we go, filling the unit. And I got some on the side there. And there it is. That's about an inch from the top. Oh, we've got fire here. It is a nice size flame. They include this, which I originally I thought was a coaster, but they show it being used to snuff the fire out. Let's see how that works. Well, it worked pretty well. Obviously the flames are hot, but the unit itself doesn't look like it's getting too hot. A little bit around the top, but the bottom seems like it's still pretty cool. It's kind of warm towards the top here. I don't know if I'd want to hold that. Down here it's not so bad, but up here it's pretty warm. But I wanted to also point out, they say you should not refill this while it's burning. That could be bad. And they also say you shouldn't really move it while it's burning. That could be bad too. The big question is, can you actually toast marshmallows and not taste like rubbing alcohol? Let's find out. I think we're going to get a toast of marshmallow here. Well, it is toasted. Let me take a bite here. Mmm, just like when I was a kid. Well, I mean, you can't use it for this. I really didn't have to come out here to do my marshmallow. I just want to do it for dramatic purposes. So let me finish my marshmallow, go inside, and then wrap this thing up. There is a bit of an alcohol smell when it's extinguished, but while it's burning, I didn't smell anything at all. It's a pretty attractive display, but obviously since you have fire indoors, you want to be extra careful with it. But I think it pretty much works as advertised. So although I did think that it worked, the idea of an indoor fire pit using rubbing alcohol didn't really appeal to me. So this one ended up out in the boneyard. Number 463 was a tiny appliance that could supposedly make an entire breakfast all at once. Let's first take a look back at the original review and see how that went. It has dual griddle compartments that allows you to cook two things at a time, like eggs, veggies, pancakes, or bacon. And they say it has cool touch handles. First up, loading the bread tray. Since they have to stack these, I guess I'll do them kind of outward like that maybe and then flip them halfway through. Now the bacon, I'm just gonna kind of they really, it's, this is literally not even one full piece of bacon. Now for the egg. I think I'm going to puncture this. All right, it is punctured. They say next up, cover with glass. They're saying to rotate the dial all the way over to five minutes. Uh, we're, we're done. Let's take a look. The bacon looks cooked. Maybe not quite as cooked as I want, but it's cooked. Take a look at this egg here. All right, that's the other side. That's definitely done. Now the bread I was kind of worried about. Let's see what we got here. Now it's, it's not even toasted. Not even toasted. This is the five minute result. We got some bacon, which is, looks certainly edible. Um, we have an egg that's cooked. I maybe would have flipped that if I had known it was gonna cook that much on one side. 
but not bad. And then the bread, I'm very disappointed. It's almost toasted on this side and not as much on this side. So that's gonna take a lot more than, than five minutes. Let me compile this sandwich and see how it tastes. I topped it off with a slice of cheese, which hasn't even melted yet, but here's my breakfast sandwich. I think it's ideal for things like campers and RVs, dorms maybe. It's not perfect, but I do think most people can get it to work. The good news is it pretty much does everything it's supposed to do. Now the bad news is that there's kind of a learning curve and most people have a stove or a toaster and don't really need something like this. It'd be good for something like a dorm, but most people don't really need this, including me. Number 464 was the Mayu Swirl, which is a device that supposedly aerates water and creates a beautiful display at the same time. Did it work and was it worth 180 bucks? Here's some clips from my original review. They say it creates enhanced water. It's like drinking from a flowing river. It aerates the water, letting it breathe like fine wine, balances pH and helps remove volatile compounds. Go. I have overfilled it a little bit because I need some extra water for my couple of tests I'm doing. I've got these two glasses. I'm going to pour some in now, pour some in later, and then taste them side by side and see if there's any difference. This is my before control glass of tap water. First use. And... Oh, wait. oh wait. we have a vortex. We have a vortex forming. All right, it's been 25 minutes. Let's taste it and see if there's any difference. All right, here's my two glasses. Before and after. First up, the before water. Hmm. Not a fan of Las Vegas tap water. So it has nowhere to go but up from there, right? Was there a difference? I really can't tell. Let me keep trying. So I keep drinking these back and forth, trying to see what kind of a difference there is. There is a slight difference in taste. It's a little bit better. This has a pretty strong tap water flavor to it. This is a subtle tap water flavor. The texture is a bit smoother on this one than this one. It's not a huge difference. It's a small difference. Now I found that the display part of the claims were accurate. It was a very nice display and it was part of my set here for several months. As far as it creating better tasting water, I felt like those claims fell a bit flat. It's a great display piece, but I don't think the aeration feature is worth the cost. Number 465 was the vacuum trim, which is an as seen on TV trimmer that includes an adjustable dial and a built in vacuum. But did it live up to the advertising hype? Let's look back at my original review and see how that went. Got this dial here that raises it up. Oh, that's kind of cool. To add the attachment, all you do is stick it in there and it snaps into place. Now there's a dial here. You can see there's numbers one and 11. One is for the short attachment and 11 is for the long one. So you can go from one up to 10 or 11 up to 20. It sounds like a vacuum. One side's gonna be shaved by the vacuum trim and the other one by the wall trimmer. Oh, I hear a lot going on this time. Oh yeah. So it looks like so far, it, it's, it's not 100%, but it's, it's certainly better. I take a look at the results here. On the left side is the wall trimmer, on the right side is the vacuum trim. This is with a number two attachment, number one attachment, no attachment. Clearly less whiskers left behind from the vacuum trim. I really like the dial here where you can adjust the level without having to change attachments. That's a nice feature. So I'm kind of a fan of the vacuum trim. Now the vacuum trim was the only as seen on TV product that I tested last year that ended up in my best of the year list. So I do think it actually worked. It's something I use every day. I like the dial feature. I like the vacuum feature. And the battery lasts a long time on this. I would say this is one of the best better assay on TV products I've actually reviewed. Number 466 was a waffle cone maker. Now this is early 2023 when everybody was jumping on the chat GPT bandwagon and I figured I would ask it what it, I should review and that's what it gave to me. So here's some scenes from how that review went. All right, I created their recipe for the waffle cone mix. It smells good, we'll see how it actually tastes. Again, this is three tablespoons. If it's not enough, we'll go with four next time. Gently close it. It's been two minutes. Oh wow, that looks nice. Now they say to use the cone to lift it out of here. And then you're supposed to just kind of wrap it around. They say to use a paper towel if you need to, but I don't think I really need to. Right, well, I can already tell the hole in the bottom is a little bit bigger than I want, so I certainly have to make some adjustments here. I think the two minutes worked. So they give you this bowl mold. You put it in here, you press it in a shape with this, and then you should have your waffle bowl. There you go, pouring the batter. Closing the unit. All right, it's been three minutes. Let's see how it looks. And lift it out with this 
and then place it on there. And then we take the second bowl and we kind of push them together. I guess I'll just hold it like this for about 30 seconds. It's, I didn't even put it in there evenly, so oh well. All right, there it is. I, it looks pretty good. I guess I just didn't put it on there straight. All right, so taste-wise, it's very good. That's a pretty good recipe, but also the texture of these are much better than you find with commercial cones. Those are a little bit more crunchy and, and hard. The ones that I made here are much lighter and crispier. I actually really liked it. I felt like the machine was pretty forgiving. Like uh, even the ones that didn't turn out great are still edible. So I think that it's kind of hard to really mess it up. Now this is a very niche product and I don't eat that much ice cream and usually not even with a cone. I did think it worked, but this one ended up in the boneyard. Number 467 was the shred machine, which could shred anything from chicken to meat to lettuce. With only a few turns, I had been getting a lot of requests for this, so here's how my review went. This device supposedly allows you to shred meats and lettuce, other things, a couple cuts, and then we'll just shred each third. All right, now this, there's no way this is too thick. Here we go. Oh, oh, here we go, okay. Now we're making progress. Let's see what we got here. Oh, wow, okay. I wanna try a thick piece again. Oh yeah. Now let's try a standard chicken breast, placing it on the unit itself. Put the lid on there and twist. Let's see what we got here. Oh wow, not bad. Placing the chuck roast on the shred machine. Put the top on here, see what happens. And it looks like there's a few pieces in here that need to be re-shredded, but it's a pretty good start, I think. For the most part, it's pretty well shredded. There's a couple of larger chunks, but for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. All right, so as far as cleaning this goes, I just rinsed it off in between each use. I put in the dishwasher at the end and it came out quite well for that. But my very low expectations with this were pretty much exceeded on almost everything I tried. So I went into that review thinking it was kind of a gimmick and I, when I, by the time I finished my review, I really thought it was kind of a useful tool. It's a bit situational, but I'd say I probably used it four or five times since that review and I do think that it works quite well. Number 468 was a gadget that could make grilled cheese sandwiches in the microwave and here's how my review went. Now the claims that you can produce a crispy grilled sandwich right in your microwave works by heating the thermal material that acts as a grill against the food. Less mess than conventional methods, non-stick surface, dishwasher safe. I have two buttered slices of bread, a couple pieces of cheese, but let me top this off now. And I guess you kind of hook these over the top like this. All right, that is it, that's how it's gonna look. Just like this. All right, well I'm supposed to flip this, so I'll do that. It does seem like it's a little, a little bit lopsided though. Well, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. It did grill it, so I'm happy about that. Pre-made hamburger patty right here. Here we go, three minutes. All right, see what we got for three minutes. Oh, it's sizzling. I can't see anything, but it's sizzling. It's, it's halfway cooked, but it's, it's certainly on its way. Let me try another three minutes. All right, we got sizzle going on here and some, uh, some drippage. Oh, it looks grilled. It looks grilled. I would say that's a grilled hamburger. What do you guys think? It looks, I mean, it looks certainly acceptable to me. All right, so in the end, I would say you can certainly use this to make grilled cheese sandwiches, although it's probably gonna take some trial and error to get it just right, like it did with me. You can make other things in there, like it did with the hamburger, although in this case, I kind of had to accommodate for the grease, because it doesn't really have anywhere to go. Even though I don't think it was completely even as far as the grilled cheese sandwiches went, I think unless you're really picky about that sort of thing, it's certainly acceptable. Now, I probably eat about one grilled cheese sandwich uh, a month, and I would say I've used that maybe half the time since then because it's pretty good for that. It tends to smash the sandwiches a little bit, but it doesn't really matter once it's cooked. So I do think it actually works pretty well. Number 469 were dissolvable labels. Now you can write on these, put them on containers, and they wash right off. They're going around online and I want to check them out for myself and here's how that went. No more sticky residue. Labels wash away under any temperature water. Good for meal prep, home, or work. Now normally you're going to put it on something like this, like a container or a jar, and I'm certainly going to do that. There we go. Another one down. Initial, JW. All right. Just going to stick it right there. 
I'll put two labels on here. One on the lid and one on the jar itself. It says nothing. Hopefully there's nothing left when it's done. The big test. And, oh wow. All right, well, it's, it's definitely dissolving. It is definitely dissolving. I don't feel any sticky residue either. Wow. Let's see if I can help it along a little bit. I guess it doesn't really matter. It feels a little bit slick and then it's gone. So they say cold or warm. And there it goes. I've got some warm soapy water in there. Let's throw a couple of these in there and just let them soak and see how it works. All right, it's been about two minutes. Let's, let's check here. First lid, no, oh wow, nothing's there. Rapid steamer, nothing, gone. Where's that lid? Lid, that's gone too. They did dissolve in the water, so as far as I'm concerned, they work exactly as advertised. Now this is one of those products I was kind of surprised how often I actually use them. The best use for these are on plastic containers that you reuse a lot. If I could change one thing though, I would, I would not put any text at all in there. I just write across it without even worrying about their lines. But otherwise, I thought this was a great product. Number 470 was the Juice Vortex, which is a citrus squeezer and juicer. I thought it worked pretty well, and here's how my original review went. What you're really supposed to do is just cut medium fruit in half. Small fruit can go in there as is, and large fruit has to be cut into chunks. I'm gonna start off with a half orange. This has gotta be its bread and butter, right? Placing the orange onto the reamer. Placing the cap back on there. Lock it into place. Oh, it's doing something. Oh, it's doing something. It doesn't sound like it's very healthy, but it's doing something. This is nice right here. That's a little bit unexpected. But this is how much juice I got out of a half an orange. Little bit of pulp, not a lot. It, it doesn't look or sound very good, but maybe that doesn't mean anything. Wow, that is not a lot. That's clean as a whistle. We got a lot of apple material in there, but I'm not gonna clean that out. I'm gonna put another one right in and keep going. That is a juice from one apple. It's a bit cloudy, but it doesn't look like there's too much material in there. Let's see. I mean, it tastes perfectly fine. It, it, it worked. It worked. I think it works. All the capacity is quite small. Now, this is something I actually have used on occasion. Not a lot, but it does work when I use it. Now, I just reviewed another juicer, and I thought it might be fun real quick to just try both of them at the same time and see what happens. Now, they're not directly comparable, but let's just see what happens anyways. So, in this corner, we've got the Juice Vortex. In this corner, we have the number one masticating juicer on Amazon. Let's see what happens when we run them both at the same time. Now, in this one, I could put it in a full apple in there, but just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna put a half in each one. Starting off with the Juice Vortex, placing the apple. It was a tight squeeze, but it did fit. I'll place a half apple in the masticating juicer. Maybe a bit of a fluke, but the masticating juicer got stuck out of the gate, so the juice vortex is a little bit faster. A comparable amount, maybe the masticating juicer got a little bit more. Well, in the case of a half of an apple, I would say that the juice vortex did pretty well. Now, if you're gonna do high volume, it's not gonna be the case. For just doing a half of a fruit here and there, it's actually pretty good. Well, that's it as far as this update video goes. I would say my favorites of the bunch would be the vacuum trim and probably the labels. Least favorite for obvious reasons is the $200 pin that ended up right in the boneyard. But that's all I've got. I'll be back in about another month with my next update video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.